I welcome you all uh, for this lecture of module 2. In this uh, session, we will uh, study about uh, height gauge and uh, micrometer, the construction of uh, height gauge and uh, various uh, applications of uh, height gauge and what are the different types of uh, height gauge, those things we will study. Similarly, in the micrometer, we will uh, study a little bit about uh, history of uh, micrometer and then we will move to the construction and uh, uh, various uh, uses of uh, micrometer and then we will study the variants of micrometer. Now, let us start our discussion with uh, height gauge. So, this photograph shows uh, a vernier type uh, height gauge. I will just explain the different uh, parts of the vernier height gauge. This is the main scale, this is the column of uh, the vernier height gauge and on the column we have uh, main scale, one side we have uh, metric scale and on the other side we have uh, English uh, uh, scale. Now, you can see here we have uh, some arrangement for uh, lifting the scale, for sliding the scale up and down. The details of uh, this portion is shown in this figure. Uh, we can see the screw and we can see the nut. By rotating the nut, the main scale can be moved up and down. This is needed for uh, making the zero adjustment. And then coming to the vernier part, uh, we have uh, one side metric uh, vernier and on the other side uh, English vernier. Uh, we have a screw for clamping uh, the measuring head to the uh, beam and similarly, there is a screw for moving uh, the measuring jaw up and down. Now, you can see here a uh, carbide tipped uh, scriber is uh, fixed to the measuring jaw and uh, there is a clamp uh, for fixing the carbide tipped uh, jaw to the measuring jaw. So, by rotating the screw, we can clamp uh, or the scriber to the measuring jaw. This is the base of uh, the vernier uh, scale, vernier height gauge and the bottom view of the vernier height gauge you can see. So, this is the ground uh, uh, finished surface at the center it is relieved and then this portion is the bottom of uh, the beam and uh, a screw by means of screw it is uh, fixed to the base and here you can see the the clamp uh, which is used to fix the scriber. This is the carbide tip scriber. This uh, scriber can be fixed to the measuring jaw with the help of this uh, clamp. Now, uh, we can see the close view of uh, vernier height gauge. We can see the vernier and uh, a screw for uh, fixing the measuring jaw to the uh, beam and then uh, there is a screw, we can uh, initially we have to screw this and then we have to operate this screw for finer uh, adjustment of the vernier. And then uh, we can see the scriber has been removed, clamp has been removed and now uh, we are viewing the top surface of the measuring jaw. Now, it is very essential that the top surface and the bottom surface of the measuring jaws should be parallel and uh, these two surfaces, these two surfaces top and bottom surfaces of the measuring jaw should be parallel to the uh, datum surface within uh, uh, 10 microns. So, that we can check with the help of uh, a dial indicator. Now, you can see the dial indicator is uh, fixed to the uh, column of uh, magnetic uh, stand and the spindle is uh, in contact with the top surface of the measuring jaw. Now, uh, we have to make zero adjustment when it, when it just touches the top surface of the measuring jaw. Now, slowly we have to move this uh, dial indicator uh, towards the uh, uh, vernier height gauge, towards the beam of the vernier height gauge and then we should note down what is the reading. So, this reading should be less than 10 microns. 
Now checking for zero error in the vernier height gauge. Now uh, we can observe here the main scale zero line is here and this is the zero line of the vernier. Now they are not uh, coinciding even though the scriber is in contact with the datum surface the scale is showing some reading. So, this uh, we should adjust by lifting the main scale as I have already uh, discussed. Now, we can see here we have lifted uh, we have made some adjustments in the height of the main scale and now there is uh, uh, no 0 error. Now, uh, let me explain uh, the vernier height gauge. This uh, shows uh, the vernier height gauge. This is the base of uh, the vernier height gauge and this is the main scale vertical bar. Uh, this is vertical bar and you can see the main scale. The resolution of this main scale is uh, 1 millimeter. Now, we can see the range of this uh, instrument it is 0 to 300 uh, millimeter and this portion is uh, the measuring head and we have the vernier scale uh, here and now this is the uh, scriber attached uh, to the measuring uh, head and you can see the carbide uh, tip here and this can be used uh, for uh, scribing uh, lines on the work pieces and this can also be used for measuring uh, height of the work pieces. Now, uh, I will explain how to uh, use this for measurement of uh, height of a work piece. I am taking a work piece here and we should uh, initially check uh, approximately what is the height of the work piece using uh, a steel rule and then we have to adjust the gap between the datum and uh, the bottom surface of the scriber and then we have to uh, lock the measuring head using this uh, screw and then this is the finer uh, adjustment screw. I am just operating the screw so that uh, the measuring the scriber just uh, moves down and it just touches the work piece. So, the feel of the operator is very very important here. We should not we should not apply the over pressure here. If uh, over pressure uh, uh, is applied what happens is uh, this base uh, will move up as shown uh, on the black board. Now, I am uh, operating this. So, it is uh, just uh, touching the work piece. Now, I will read uh, the scale. Now, this is the 0 reference. So, now, it is uh, 4 40 millimeter on the main scale and now we have to see what is the coinciding uh, division. 15th uh, division is uh, coinciding with the uh, line graduation on the main scale that means 15 into 0 0.02 is uh, 0.3. So, to the main scale reading uh, value that is uh, 40 millimeter we have to add uh, the reading of the vernier that is 0.3. So, the height of this uh, work piece is 40.3 millimeter. Now, we can see here setting of height gauge using a uh, slip gauge. So, initially uh, we have used a slip gauge here and we have used uh, uh, a lever type uh, dial indicator and uh, any required height can be set using this arrangement. So, we can use this slip gauge and uh, say this is uh, 40 millimeter. So, th now the uh, we have to adjust we have to move the uh, measuring uh, jaw so that this reads uh, 0. So, in that case uh, we have set the height gauge to 40 millimeter diameter and then we can uh, use this setting for uh, the comparison purpose to check the height of other uh, work pieces. In that uh, in the in this case we are using the vernier height gauge as a comparator and then uh, we have uh, digital height gauge you can see the base of the digital height gauge and then uh, beam of the digital height gauge. Now, here instead of vernier we have a digital readout. We have uh, hold uh, option for uh, holding the uh, data point and then uh, we can uh, 
fix the tolerance uh, values. Okay. So, so we can quickly take the readings because of the digital display. Also, there is a provision for uh, transferring the data to a computer via RS 232C for uh, data transmission and uh, this uh, will be useful for uh, statistical quality control. Now, uh, there are some uh, advanced uh, digital height gauges. Uh, a photograph of uh, advanced digital height gauge is uh, shown here. This is the base of uh, the height gauge and this is the column or uh, beam of the height gauge and then uh, we have a wheel for uh, height adjustment when we rotate this depending upon the direction in which uh, we rotate the probes will uh, move up and down. Now, you can see the measuring probes here. We have arrangement for uh, fixing multiple probes, one more probe we can fix here. So, both the pr probes we can use uh, together. Now, this is the display unit uh, for displaying the data. Now, what are the various uh, features of this uh, or such a advanced uh, digital height gauge? We can see here perpendicularity measurement. This uh, uh, instrument can be used uh, for uh, measuring the perpendicularity. I will just write some uh, simple sketches. Say we have uh, some work piece uh, like this. So, we can uh, fix a probe here and uh, we have to move the probe towards the work piece and we have to just touch the work piece and then we have to move the probe up and again we have to just touch the work piece. Then they, if there is any difference that gives the perpendicularity measurement. Similarly, we can use this uh, for uh, diameter measurement. Say we have a work piece with a hole like this. So, this is the work piece with a hole. Now, what we can do? We can uh, move the probe and we can uh, make a contact here, first contact, second contact somewhere here and third contact. Then these three data are uh, supplied to the microprocessor attached to the instrument which will calculate the diameter of uh, the hole and it also calculates uh, coordinates of the center point. And then uh, uh, circle pitch measurement, say we have some uh, two, three holes like this this is first hole, this is the second hole and then say we have third hole. So, now the diameter of all the three holes uh, we can uh, measure and now say we want a pitch circle pitch measure that means, what is the see this is the center of uh, first circle and this is the center of uh, second circle and this is the center of third circle. What is the pitch? What is the distance between the centers of different uh, uh, circles. So, that uh, can be calculated. The microprocessor will calculate the data and it will display the circle uh, pitch uh, measurement. And then uh, multiple probes can be used together. Now, uh, we have fixed one uh, probe here and we can also fix one more probe here. Together, uh, we can uh, use uh, both both of them together we can use for so that measurement becomes uh, very fast. I will just write uh, a rough sketch. So, we have uh, some work piece uh, like this. So, there is a projection in the work piece. Now, I want this distance to be measured. So, this is the distance to be measured. Now, what we can do? We can uh, rotate this wheel, so that this probe will make contact with this surface and then again we rotate the wheel in the other direction, so that the probe that is fixed here will make contact with this. So, the difference in reading will give the uh, distance uh, between these two surfaces. So, for such uh, quick uh, measurements, we can use uh, multiple probes 
and then we can also attach uh, extra long uh, probes. Say we have some uh, work piece like this. Okay, this is the work piece. Now, we need to measure uh, the diameter of this uh, inner hole, diameter of this inner hole and also we need to measure the distance between uh, this surface and this surface that is depth of inner hole. Now, in this case uh, we can always fix uh, extra long uh, probes and then that probe uh, will come here it will make contact and then uh, uh, we can uh, move the probe inside the hole. So, that uh, difference in reading gives the depth. Also that extra long probe can be used to measure the diameter of the inner uh, hole. So, this is about uh, extra long probes. So, the probes are available in the length of uh, 100 millimeter, 200 millimeter like that. Then data transfer facility is uh, provided for uh, statistical quality control uh, purpose. All the data, uh, measured data can be supplied to a computer wherein uh, the SQC softwares are available. So, it can be data can be used for processing. And another important uh, feature of such a device is air cushion with built in compressor. Now, uh, uh, the weight of this uh, will be like uh, 25 kg or 30 kg. So, it uh, becomes uh, heavy, a uh, lot of effort is required to move uh, uh, this instrument over the surface plate. So, to make it easy the for moving uh, the for sliding the instrument, air cushions are uh, provided uh, at the bottom of uh, the base. So, and uh, it is a built in compressor, it has its own built in compressor and uh, uh, the external com compressor uh, is not necessary. So, because of this arrangement, we can easily slide the vernier height gauge on the surface plate. And another beautiful uh, feature of this uh, instrument is whenever by mistake the operator tries to move the height cage uh, beyond the uh, surface uh, that is available on the surface plate. Immediately there will be air locking, the instrument will be uh, uh, it gets clamped to the surface plate so that it will not fall. And then we have uh, a built in uh, battery facility. Uh, depending upon the usage uh, the its life will be like uh, uh, 500 hours or uh, 1000 hours like that. And then uh, we have uh, swiveling display. So, this uh, display uh, can be swiveled, it can be swiveled uh, like this uh, so that uh, the reading becomes uh, easy. And then measuring force adjustment facility is uh, available in this depending upon the work piece whether it is soft material like rubber, plastic or hard material like uh, uh, metal, we can adjust the measuring force. It can be uh, uh, force can be like uh, 1 Newton or 2, new, 2 Newton or 3 Newton depending upon the work piece we can adjust the measuring force. And uh, another uh, very important feature is go no go judgment is possible. So, any physical quantity for example, high diameter etcetera will have some tolerance and those uh, tolerance values uh, we can feed uh, to the instrument. And then when we make uh, the actual uh, measurement, the microprocessor will uh, check whether that uh, measured uh, quantity is within the tolerance or not. If the measured quantity is within the tolerance specified, then uh, it will indicate that uh, it is acceptable, work piece is acceptable. If it is beyond the limits, then it will indicate that it should be rejected by displaying some red color. So, like this we can uh, use this instrument for uh, uh, quick uh, uh, judgment like limit gauging type of work. And then uh, this uh, can be used working uh, temperature range is from 0 to 40 degree Celsius. So, uh, within that range uh, we can uh, use without making any external uh, uh, thermal compensation and uh, the mm to inch conversion is possible. This can be used uh, for uh, uh, measurement of distances in uh, metric system as well as in uh, inch uh, system.
Now, there are some more uh, features perpendicularity of this uh, height gauge is uh, 0 0.006 millimeter. That means, range uh, the, these instruments are available with the range of uh, like 300 millimeter, 600 millimeter and 900 millimeter and uh, over the height over the uh, full range the perpendicularity that means, uh, this uh, surface will be perpendicular uh, to the vertical movement and that uh, error will be within uh, 6 uh, micrometer and then uh, the vertical movement uh, that is straightness of this uh, of such an instrument will be like uh, 4 uh, micrometer and 6, 60,000 data points can be stored in the memory of uh, uh, this uh, such instruments and whenever required they can be retrieved and uh, used and uh, the resolutions. Uh, uh, switchable resolutions are possible like 10 microns, 1 microns and 0 0.1 micrometer. That means, depending upon the accuracy needed we can always uh, switch, we can select the appropriate uh, uh, resolution. Now, uh, let us start uh, the discussion on another very important uh, instrument that is uh, micrometer. Now, uh, let us study uh, so some uh, points about uh, the history of the micrometer. Now, you can see here this uh, picture shows uh, a micrometer designed and developed by James Watt in uh, 1772. You can see that uh, there are two dials are there and two points are pointers are there and then uh, we have that uh, U shaped body of the micrometer. Even now, we are using uh, U shaped uh, body of the micrometer with little uh, variations and uh, this is uh, the annual fixed to the body and this is the movable uh, uh, spindle. So, we have to keep the work piece here and we have to move this and then by reading these two dials, we can get uh, the dimension of the work piece. And then uh, this uh, micrometer is developed by Jean Palmer in uh, 1848. That means, approximately after uh, uh, 70 or 75 years, uh, Jean Palmer uh, improved the micrometer. Here you can see uh, this is uh, too huge. We have to fix uh, this uh, micrometer to maybe a table uh, surface by using bolts. Whereas, here this is uh, this can be handheld very small. Uh, instrument. Now, let us uh, discuss about uh, the anatomy of uh, outside uh, micrometer. Now, uh, this is the frame of the micrometer made of uh, steel and now you can see here heat insulator is provided here, a plastic material is uh, provided here. So, when the operator holds uh, the micrometer, his body uh, temperature will not flow, heat will not flow to the body of the micrometer. So, that the thermal expansion of the body due to the body temperature of operator will be uh, less. Now, uh, we have a anvil fixed to the frame of the micrometer and then we have a spindle which can be advanced or it can be retracted inside the sleeve. This is the sleeve wherein we have to uh, insert the spindle and the spindle has uh, finely cut threads. Okay. They are uh, ground uh, threads. The pitch of uh, this uh, screw is normally 0.5 millimeter. Now, these two are the measuring phases. Measuring phases are very, very important. They are uh, uh, heat treated, uh, ground and lapped uh, and then stabilization is required. So, that internal stresses are relieved, so that they will not deform and uh, the phases are lapped and uh, the measuring phase flatness and parallelism between these two surfaces is very, very important. Uh, flatness and parallelism can be checked using uh, optical flats and normal uh, flatness value will be 1 micron or less than that and parallelism will be 1 micron or less than that depending upon the accuracy of the micrometer. And now, we can see there is a clamp here spindle lock for 
locking the spindle at any desired location. And now, this is the sleeve on which we have uh, uh, scale graduations, this is called uh, sleeve scale or uh, main scale and then we have the timbal. So, this is the timbal portion. So, this side of the timbal, right side of the timbal uh, uh, we can see that they are knurled for uh, easy rotation of the timbal and on the left end of the timbal we have again uh, graduations. We will see about this uh, graduation after some time. And then there is a nut here which is uh, fixed to the inner uh, sleeve. So, when we rotate the thimble, timbal, thimble thimble is rigidly fixed to the screw. When we rotate the thimble, thimble, this uh, screw will move in and out. That means, the spindle can be advanced towards the anvil or it can be retracted. Now, sometimes due to continuous usage, there may be some clearance between the screw and uh, the nut. So, we have to adjust the clearance for that there is uh, an adjustment nut. When we rotate the adjustment nut, the clearance between the uh, main nut and the screw will be reduced and uh, then and hence a slackness or backlash can be eliminated. And then we have a rap ratchet stop arrangement to apply uniform uh, measuring uh, force. We will see the construction of this ratchet a little later. Let me explain how to use uh, the micrometer. This is uh, the frame of the micrometer. You can see that ribbed uh, shape, rib ribbings are there so that it becomes uh, rigid. And then uh, here uh, the range is uh, mentioned 0 to 25 millimeter and then uh, the resolution of uh, this instrument is 0 0.01 millimeter. We can see the carbide tipped anvil and carbide tipped uh, spindle. The clamp for uh, clamping the spindle, uh, the thimble, sleeve and ratchet. Now, before using uh, this micrometer, we have to clean the faces, anvil face and uh, the spindle face with a clean cloth or uh, smooth paper. So, that dust particles and uh, oily layer is uh, removed and then we have to unclamp the spindle and then slowly we have to rotate the thimble like this and then we have to operate uh, the ratchet till we get one or two clicks. Now, we have to observe the reading. Now, we can see the reference line and this is uh, 0 on thimble. It is not coinciding with the 0 on the sleeve. That means, there is some 0 error. We have to eliminate this 0 error before using this instrument. For that, an arrangement is provided when we rotate this uh, micrometer. So, this is the back side view. We can see back side of the sleeve there is a small hole. Now, a spanner is provided with the micrometer. Now, we have to use this uh, spanner and we have to operate the, uh, we have to rotate the sleeve in proper direction, so that the 0 error is eliminated. Now, we can see the 0 error is eliminated and now this uh, instrument is ready for using. Now, we can see the anvil uh, surface, close view of the anvil uh, surface. Sometimes uh, uh, now the carbide tipped uh, anvil surfaces are also available, so that wear is uh, less. Now, flatness of measuring uh, uh, surface, measuring surface as well as anvil surface is very, very important. They are uh, ground and lapped and uh, flatness uh, error will be uh, below less than uh, 1 micrometer and uh, the spindle surface and uh, the anvil surface uh, should be parallel. If there is any taper inclination, then uh, the error will creep in. So, it is very essential that these two surface anvil surface and measure uh, spindle surface should be parallel and a parallelism of uh, less than 1 micron is uh, maintained. 
the parallelism and uh, the flatness can be checked using uh, optical flats. So, this uh, shows a close view of uh, a spindle surface. So, it is very essential that uh, we should maintain all these uh, precision instruments whenever they are not in use for a longer time we should apply a petroleum jelly to all the uh, important uh, parts of uh, the uh, moving parts of the instrument. Now, you can see here since uh, the coating uh, was not provided there is a uh, corrosion. Now, uh, crew has been removed out of the sleeve. Now, we can uh, observe uh, the ground uh, threads very fine uh, threads are there the pitch of uh, the matrix uh, micrometer will be normally 0.5 millimeter. And you can also clearly see the taper on the uh, thimble uh, surface and we can also see the graduations very clearly. And this is the micrometer stand and uh, we can clamp it and we the ag inclination of uh, this uh, can be adjusted by rotating this uh, knob. So, uh, whenever uh, required we can uh, use uh, the micrometer stand. If the work piece is very heavy when uh, we have to hold the work piece uh, with both the hands then in that case micrometer stand will be very useful. Now, some uh, inner details of the micrometer we can observe here. This is the adjusting nut and then we have main nut. So, main nut has uh, both internal and external thread inside also there are threads and this will be mating with the main screw of uh, the micrometer and outside of the main nut also we have uh, uh, threads. So, when we rotate this uh, adjusting nut you can see here the slots are provided and uh, using uh, the uh, spanner we can rotate this uh, adjusting we can rotate the adjusting nut. So, that and in the ma main nut we have uh, slots slots are cut. So, when we rotate the adjusting nut the main nut gets compressed and it uh, uh, embraces uh, the main uh, screw and hence uh, if there is any clearance that is eliminated and backlash is eliminated. And then uh, the ratchet uh, mechanism disassembly I told uh, that ratchet is used to apply uniform uh, measuring uh, force. When the measuring torque exceeds a certain value which is decided by the spring we can see here there is a spring here. So, the spring tension decides what is the amount of force that is applied onto the work piece normally it will be like 5 newtons, 6 newtons, 7 newtons. And uh, since we apply uniform pressure this uh, ratchet mechanism is used when the torque exceeds the set uh, limit which is decided by the spring. Now, you can see here the this uh, these two parts one acts as ratchet and uh, another acts as pawl. So, when the torque exceeds this uh, pawl will slip and hence uh, the further uh, movement of uh, the spindle will uh, stop. So, this is how the uniform pressure is applied on the work piece. Now, let us study how we can use uh, the micrometer to measure the thickness of uh, this uh, plate. Now, I am keeping the plate on the datum surface and then I am moving the micrometer towards the work piece and then slowly we have to operate the thimble. Now, the spindle is uh, advancing and it is moving towards the work piece, it is moving towards the work piece. Now, it has just touched the work piece and giving I am using the ratchet to apply uniform pressure and then I am clamping the spindle. Now, slowly we have to remove the work piece. Now, we have to take the reading. Now, main scale or sleeve scale reading is 0, 
वन टू थ्री फोर सो फोर मिलीमीटर एंड देन ऑन द थिम्बल वी हैव जीरो वन सेकेंड सेकेंड ग्रेजुएशन इज को इनसाइडिंग दैट मीन्स सेकेंड ग्रेजुएशन मीन्स टू इंटू पॉइंट जीरो वन दैट इज पॉइंट जीरो टू सो द थिकनेस ऑफ दिस प्लेट इज फोर पॉइंट जीरो टू मिलीमीटर ना लेट मी शो हाउ वी कैन मेशर द आउटसाइड डायमीटर ऑफ वर्क पीस आई एम शोइंग द मेशरमेंट ऑफ मेशरमेंट ऑफ ओ डी ऑफ दिस पोर्शन सो नाउ द वर्क पीस इज बिटवीन एनविल एंड स्पिंडल नाउ स्लोली वी हैव टू रोटेट द थिम्पल इन द रिवर्स डायरेक्शन सो स्पिंडल इज मूविंग टूवर्ड्स द वर्क पीस नाउ इट हेज जस्ट टचड द वर्क पीस now let me operate the ratchet and then we have to clamp the spindle now slowly we have to remove uh, the work piece now we have to read the scale so this is the main scale uh, zero 5 mm 10 mm 11 12 13 and then uh, 13.5 13.5 and then thimble reading 45 46 so this reference line is between uh, 46 and 47 we will take 46 46 into resolution that is 0.01 so the thimble reading is uh, 0.46 so this 0.46 we have to add to main scale reading that is 10 uh, 13.5 13.5 plus uh, 0.46 that means 13.96 13.96 is the diameter of the work piece now let us see the variants of uh, the micrometer there are uh, various uh, kinds of micrometers available in the market now uh, let us study this uh, inside uh, micrometer and uh, disc type uh, micrometer and uh, the large uh, micrometers and uh, dial type uh, micrometer now this uh, shows front view of inside micrometer now you can see this is the sleeve on sleeve we have the main scale and then this is the thimble and this is the ratchet and uh, now this uh, jaw is fixed to the sleeve and when the spindle move when we rotate the thimble spindle moves in and out depending upon the direction of the thimble so to the spindle a moving caliper or moving jaw is fixed so in this case this part of the jaw this jaw will move and this is fixed to the sleeve and now we can see the range of uh, this instrument it is uh, 5 mm to 30 mm that is the range and then we can see the uh, markings on the sleeve so it is in the reverse direction so this is uh, 10 15 20 25 30 like that so between two graduations here the uh, spindle movement will this represents 1 uh, mm and below this we have markings so uh, so this will give uh, 0.5 mm uh, readings so various uh, ranges are available like 175 to 200 mm with uh, 0.01 mm resolutions are uh, available so here Uh, again uh, thimble graduations are uh, visible now this is a back view of uh, inside uh, micrometric this is used for measuring the inside dimensions like uh, the distance between uh, groove or uh, inside uh, 
uh, the whole, uh, whole diameter for such things you can use this. Now, what we can see in this uh, photograph uh, there is a guide rod okay, and this is the guide. So, when we move the thimble this uh, movable jaw will move and this is guided by this uh, guide rod, guide rod and uh, the guides. Now, the resolution of this uh, instrument is uh, 0 0.01 millimeter. Now, we can observe one thing here the jaws of uh, this instrument they are contoured or radius. So, this is necessary when we want to measure the inside uh, hole uh, diameter. So, if we have a uh, flat uh, surfaces then uh, the measurement will not be correct we can see the example here I will write some sketches. So, this is uh, the inside uh, so this is the hole if we have a flat jaw then the contact will be like this contact will then this much error will occur in the measurement. So, because of this radius the jaw the contact will be like this and then there will not be any error. So, the, this is the reason why uh, the radius is provided on the jaws. Now, another variant is uh, disc type uh, micrometer this is used for uh, measurement of uh, spur gears and uh, helical gears this uh, the details of this we will see in the appropriate uh, module when we discuss about the uh, gear measurement. And uh, let us learn something about a large uh, micrometer. Now, the in the market uh, the very large micrometers are available with the range 25 to 2000 millimeter. Now, uh, one thing we can observe the measuring head range remains same 0 to 25 millimeter and then we use setting masters to set the distance. For example, in this case the uh, we have a setting master of uh, say uh, 25 millimeter length. Now, we have to insert uh, place the setting master between anvil and jaw and then we have to rotate the thimble. So, that uh, the spindle will just uh, touch uh, this surface and then the setting will be 25 millimeter because we are using 25 millimeter setting master. And then uh, if the workpiece is greater than 25 millimeter then we can use uh, this uh, instrument that means range of uh, this uh, instrument becomes 25 to 50 millimeter with this 25 millimeter setting master. Now, uh, uh, we have to place the workpiece here and then we have to rotate the thimble and then we have to take the reading and to this reading we have to add the this, uh, size of the setting master then we get the workpiece size. And you can observe insulating gripper is provided here. So, we have to hold uh, the micrometer use at this uh, grip insulator heat insulator. So, that body temperature will not transfer to the body. When uh, we hold the uh, micrometer for a longer time like uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes and if uh, heat insulator is not provided the body temperature will uh, uh, heat will get transferred to the body and then it expands and then uh, the measurement error will occur. Now, uh, various uh, sizes of setting masters are available in the range of uh, 25 to 2000 uh, millimeter uh, size in steps of 25 millimeter. So, we can depending upon the workpiece size we have to select the appro uh, appropriate uh, setting master and we have to set uh, the micrometer and then we have to use. Again uh, these uh, setting masters the flatness of surface of uh, uh, mas uh, the setting master surface is uh, uh, 0.3 micrometer or less than that they are uh, ground uh, and lapped so that uh, the flatness very good flatness is achieved. Also the parallelism between this uh, working surface and this working surface is very very important and it is uh, maintained like uh, 2 micrometer or less than 2 micrometer uh, 
parallelism is maintained so that uh, the we get a good uh, accurate uh, uh, measurement. Now, this is another uh, variant of the micrometer wherein uh, uh, we have uh, the body and then uh, spindle, anvil, clamp etc. This portion is uh, common to our uh, common uh, micrometer and uh, we have the uh, moving anvil. See the important feature of uh, this uh, micrometer is anvil also moves in and out and there is a slider to move the anvil in and out and at the other end a dial is fixed. So, the movement of anvil also can be fixed uh, by using this clamp and then movement of spindle also can be uh, uh, it can be clamped using this uh, clamp. Now, what is the advantage of using uh, this dial? See dial can be used to maintain uniform pressure. In the absence of ratchet, uh, the dial uh, dials are provided so that when we rotate the thimble, uh, the now we have the work piece here. Uh, when we rotate the thimble, spindle moves and then uh, the force is applied to the dial indicator and then uh, the pointer moves. So, by noting down the amount of rotation of the pointer, we can uh, maintain uniform uh, uh, pressure on the work piece. That is one, uh, one thing. Other thing is dial can be used uh, for no go, go and no go judgment. That means, sometimes uh, the uh, actual size of the work piece is not required. What is required is uh, whether the work piece is acceptable or not, whether it is in the within the range. So, in such cases we can insert the work piece here and then uh, uh, we can uh, move the open, we can move the anvil inside by operating the anvil, uh, so operating the slider and then we can keep the work piece here and then we can release the slider. So, that uh, anvil moves towards the work piece and then we have to note down what is the reading. If the reading is uh, within the limits, the workpiece is accepted. If it is beyond, the workpiece is rejected. Let me conclude uh, this uh, session. In this session, we discussed about uh, the height gauge, different uh, uh, types of height gauges and the construction of height gauges and what are the various uses of uh, height gauges. And we also discussed about uh, the micrometer the history of the micrometer, the construction of the micrometer, uh, what are the various uh, uh, types of micrometers. In the next session, we will continue the discussion on other types of micrometers. Thank you. Yeah.